a major area of analytical chemistry is volumetric analysis. This is determining the amount or the concentration of one particular chemical species, the analyte it's called, in the sample that you have. Now the sample may be in solid, liquid, or possibly solution form. The analysis is performed by taking a known amount of substance A and adding a controlled amount of a second solution B until the reaction between A and B is complete. There will be some means of knowing or indicating on the macro scale, the human scale, when the reaction is, has come to completion. The analysis depends on knowing the precise amounts of the reactants present, either by volume or by mass. There will be some means of knowing or indicating on the macro scale when that reaction is complete. An awful lot of these things are solutions that just look like water. So we need to know when the reaction is complete. The analysis depends on knowing that either by volume or by mass. This video will talk about how to use volumetric glassware. Volumetrics flasks, pipettes, burettes. It's going to show you how to titrate properly. We'll be using the example of acid-base reactions and one and two color indicators, but you will be using these techniques throughout the term doing other kinds of analysis. There are several videos that deal with volumetric technique. This video talks about what is happening on the molecular level during titration. There are four other videos which will show you what to do at the bench. How to use a pipette, a volumetric flask, and how to titrate both with one color and two color indicators. You will use all of these techniques in your first three experiments and later throughout the course. One of the most common tasks for an analytical chemist is to determine how much of a given substance is present in a sample. If you can get your sample into aqueous solution, that analysis becomes a whole lot easier. Solutions mix and react a whole lot faster than solids do. Titration is a well-known and well-understood way of determining concentrations by using glassware that can deliver precisely known volumes of solutions. In a titration, you need to have two species in the solution which will react with each other. That reaction must have five characteristics. First of all, it needs to be well-known. There needs to be clearly defined stoichiometry, one-to-one, one-to-two, or whatever it is. Second, it needs to react quickly. Third, it needs to essentially go to completion. That means the equilibrium is hugely over on the product side. Fourth, the products must be chemically stable. That means when you've made them, they're going to stick around. They're not going to decompose or do something else. And fifth, there must be some kind of means of indicating where the reaction has come to an end. Now, over here on the board, we'll take an example of water, H plus hydrogen ions plus hydroxide react to give water. This is an acid-based titration. It's a well-known chemical species. The products and the reactants are all stable. The equilibrium constant is 10 to the minus 14. So it's hugely over on this side of the equation. And we do have means of indicating by color or other things, a pH meter, for instance, where the reaction is, whether it, when it has come to conclusion. We're going to use in this video colored indicators, which change from color one to color two as the pH changes. If you choose the right indicator for your reaction, then the color will change completely within one or two drops right at the end point of your titration. And that will be visible on the macro scale by a human eye. If you know the concentration of one or of the two chemicals in solution, and you know precisely what volume of one solution reacts with another known volume of another solution, then you can calculate the concentration of the unknown species in solution. If you have good technique, and part of this experiment is to help you develop good technique, it, volumetric analysis is quite accurate. You can get four significant figures from volumetric analysis titrations. That's one or two orders of magnitude better than you're going to get from instrumental analysis. Titration is called volumetric analysis. You're analyzing using known volumes. That means you need to have techniques for de delivering precise volumes of solution. Now, lots of lab glassware has indications of solution, of volume rather, on it. 
For instance, I've got here a graduated cylinder and an Erlenmeyer flask. They've both got graduations on them. Uh, this one is you know, about half a mil you can take it to. This Erlenmeyer flask has graduations plus or minus 5%. They're not very accurate. You need to have particular pieces of equipment that are made for volumetric analysis. For containing accurately known volumes, we have volumetric flasks. And we've got three different sizes, 100, 250, and a liter. They come in many different sizes. They take this particular shape so that most of the volume is below. And there's a calibration line on the neck, one here, one there, and one here. And the calibration line is in the narrow portion of the flask so that changing the volume by a small amount changes the level of the liquid by a large amount. And that helps you be more accurate in measuring volume. For dispensing set volumes of liquid, we have volumetric pipettes. Now, they'll all be labeled on them somewhere. That's a 1 mil pipette, a 10. This is a 5 mil pipette, and here is a 25. You will have 10s and 25s available to you all the time. For dispensing variable volumes of liquid, unlike the pipette, which is a fixed volume, you use a burette. It's a tube. It is calibrated. This particular model, which is the common one, goes from zero at the top down to 50 mils at the bottom. If you read the burette at the beginning and then deliver some liquid and then read it again, you will know exactly how much liquid has been delivered. Burettes come with calibration lines. And we'll look a picture of that right now. This is a drawing of a section of a burette. They all come with calibration lines. And here, these are rings around the uh, tube. And then there are finer graduations within them. When you are reading them, you should read at eye level. So in this case, if this is the liquid in the burette, you should put your eye here. You shouldn't have it down here or up on top. You want to look and see that the ring is, in fact, a straight line to your eye. You are aiming to read the bottom of the meniscus uh, here. Now, so in this case, this is 17, 17.5, 17 18. So it's somewhere between 17.6 and 17.7. Probably about 17.64, I would say, in this one. Now, you can make the meniscus much more visible by using a burette reader card. It's a light-colored piece of cardboard, and you place it like this behind the burette or whatever you're trying to read. It will have a heavy, dark line. Hold the heavy, dark line. I'm going to start deleting my lines here. There, underneath. And what will happen is the, the meniscus will start to collect the color and reflect that from the heavy, dark line underneath. It will make it more visible against the light colored card on the back. An actual titration runs like this. You will take an Erlenmeyer flask and put chemical A into the flask. That will either be by pipette, if it's a liquid, or if it's a solid, you will weigh it out. If it is a solid, you'll add a little water so that it goes into solution. You will then add an indicator and place it underneath a burette. The burette will be filled with chemical B, and you will add a certain amount of chemical B until the indicator changes color, and you know that you've reached the end of the titration. In conclusion, volumetric analysis lets you understand how much of a given chemical, the analyte it's called, is in your sample. When you have watched all the other videos in this section, you will understand how to pipette, use a burette, use a volumetric flask, uh, using both single and two color indicators in the titration, using good technique.